All right. So we're college football's back. Exciting time. Great weekend. A lot of great games. And we got to start with the Florida Gators with an absolutely thrilling victory, 29-26 over Utah at home. A big upset, at least according to the rankings. Florida unranked, Utah ranked number seven. Massive last second win, scoring late to take the lead from Anthony Richardson and great defensive play to finish it off. We're going to go into all the specifics and break down this game a little bit. Before we get into that, Gators fans, look, exciting win. A lot of big-time plays, a lot of big-time players. Let us know in the comment section below who you think the player of the game was. And look, it's probably going to be Richardson, but we want to hear if there's somebody else that you thought really stepped up and had a nice game. Let us know in the comment section below. But, Myas, let's jump into your thoughts. What's, what's your overall takeaway from this performance from Florida? Yeah, Nick, and what I would tell Gators fans, if you want to be, like, you know, real Gators fans, you know, throw us the the, the MVP of the game outside of Richardson because he's clearly – yeah. clearly the favorite but here here's my uh high level as you say of the game is florida goes uh obviously they're at home but i say go into the game against a top 10 opponent okay uh for florida definitely the underdog and they took that underdog mentality and they ran with it you know they played tough on defense they capitalize on opportunities when they had the opportunity to and on offense, Richardson really just put this team on his back. He he drugged them through the entire game. You know, he's very accurate throwing the ball, extremely impressive running the ball, probably one of the better athletes in the country at this point in time. Uh, super high level prospect. Florida's got to be happy to have another, you know, big time athlete. You know, also wearing number 15. You know, so, you know, big time, high level athlete from Richardson, uh, but great overall play by him. And this just shows uh, these rankings in the preseason so early, like you can't count a team like a historic franchise like Florida, who's always like, I'd say since the 2000s, they've been 90s, 2000s, they've been a pretty strong program. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can't count a team like that out. So uh, they Utah comes into Florida. They figure out what the you know Gator heat and humidity is all about. Uh, slows down the end of the game, and then you know Florida's defense, uh, being strung along by Anthony Richardson to to get all the points for the offense. They capitalize huge interception end of the game to win the game. So I I just thought it was a pretty exciting first big week of football game back to watch. Yeah, so Richardson obviously was the MVP and is his stat line real quick. 17 to 24, a buck 68 through the air, uh, 11 carries, 106, three scores, and obviously the game winner on the ground. I think the thing I learned watching Richardson this game, first of all, he reminded me a lot of kind of a thicker Justin Herbert watching Herbert at Oregon. I mean, Richardson, I was blown away. This guy, I know he had a cannon, but he has this really quick, compact release. The ball just kind of zips off of him, and, it was, and he throws like 20-yard darts, right? You know, frozen ropes right in a receiver's chest. I was very impressed with the downfield passing game with that regard from Richardson. I think he has nowhere to go from up, nowhere to go, uh, nowhere to go but up from there. But I really think the interesting thing here is I brought up his stats, only 168 yards passing. That's one of the kind of the misnomers when you look at statistics sometimes because I had thought he had a great game throwing the football. But if you look at his numbers, 168 yards, no scores, seven yards per attempt, you know, it's not bad, but it doesn't jump off the page. You're like, oh, maybe he wasn't that big of a factor throwing the ball. I thought he was spectacular. But I do give a lot of credit to Cameron Rising from Utah quarterback. I did not really think he was all that impressive. I, I know he had a, you know some good games last year and it was all Pac-12 going into the season, all that kind of stuff. But I thought he was really, really impressive against the Florida defense that is fast and athletic. Obviously, Bernie makes a big play in the uh, uh, in the end zone to hold him off there as Utah was potentially going to win the game at the end. I want to be honest, while that was going on, what was going, you know, I was thinking about Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl for the Patriots about eight, nine years ago. I, it was before the play. I was like, you know, you know, unless someone just jumps a route here, I think Utah's going to score. Florida looks gassed. And, and sure enough, Bernie did, and, and, and Florida comes away with the win. It was, it was a great win for, for Florida and really a great start to Billy Napier's uh, term as the uh, head coach of this uh, program. As he's, You know, this is a Florida team that's always really talented. Like you brought up, they got a lot of great players. If they can just find a way to get these big wins and stream them together, they can, become back, they can go back to becoming a real force in the SEC East. Yeah, no, and it, one thing, let's touch on uh, Billy Napier. One thing I thought about him is as a coach, uh, coming in, you know, getting your team ready to go play a top 10 opponent for your real first test of the season. Like first game, come out on the field, you know, and be like guys on the, on the, you know, stat sheet, they might be ranked in the top 10, number seven overall. 
But we know we have the talent. We weren't ranked. We were a little bit disrespected in a sense. But getting your guys fired up, getting them in there, and then, you know, having that fieriness perform on the field is kind of a little bit more difficult than people give it credit for. Uh, sometimes you get people fired up and then you just get blown out of the water. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough to convert that into a big win over a big opponent. So I, I think Napier is very impressive in this, uh, you know, coaching aspect of the game. Uh, he seems to really have a grasp on what Florida is all about. Yeah, and there's one other thing about Napier that I think really uh, speaks to the credit in his coaching and his game management. So late in the game when Florida's driving to take the lead, I remember they ran the football. I forget who the running back was. He gets the first down. He's heading towards the end zone, it looks like. But instead of going out of bounds or trying to push it really close to the end zone, he's already got a first and goal like at the two. He, you see him kind of throttle it down and kind of you know slow up to try and you know go down a little bit. Not really slide, but essentially to make sure he goes down before he scores or certainly before he gets out of bounds to try and burn more clock. That's great situational awareness football, and that comes straight from the head coach. And that's the kind of things, because Florida has the talent, if they get that kind of high-level coaching figured out, they're going to be a real force the rest of the season. 